Welcome to this GitLab video. In this training video, we're going to learn about namespaces, groups, and subgroups within GitLab, and how you can use those tools to organize your GitLab instance and projects. First, let's discuss the concept of a namespace. In GitLab, a namespace is a unique name to be used as a username, group name, or subgroup name. One of the most common namespaces is the GitLab group. You can create groups for numerous reasons. To name a few, you can use them to organize related projects under the same namespace, add members to that group, and grant access to all their projects at once. To create a group, include the members of your team and make it easier to at mention all of the team at once in issues and in merge requests. To create a group for your company members and create subgroups for each individual team. For example, consider a user named Alex. Alex creates an account on GitLab.com with the username Alex. Their profile will be accessed under GitLab.com slash Alex. Alex creates a group for their team with the group name of Alex-Team. The group and its projects will all be contained under GitLab.com slash Alex-Team. Alex then creates a subgroup of Alex Team with the name Marketing. This subgroup and its projects will be under gitlab.com slash alex-team slash marketing. In addition to storing the projects associated with the group and subgroups, users can use these namespaces to ping either Alex or all of the members of a particular group. For example, any team member can mention Alex with at Alex. Alex can mention everyone from their team with at alex-team. Alternatively, Alex can mention only the marketing team with at alex-team slash marketing. Next, let's take a look at how to create and manage groups and subgroups in GitLab. You can create a group in GitLab from either the groups page, from the top menu, click groups, and then click the green button that says new group. Or you can create it from anywhere. If you expand the plus button on the top nav bar and choose new group. Add the following information to your group. Set the group path, which will be the namespace under which your projects will be hosted. The group name will populate with the path. Optionally, you can change it. This is the name that will display in the group views. Optionally, you can add a description so that others briefly understand what this group is about and also choose an avatar for the group. Finally, choose the visibility level. This will set the maximum visibility for this group as well as all subgroups and projects underneath this group. You can learn more about this in our visibility training video. One of the benefits of putting multiple projects in one group is that you can give a user access to all projects in the group with one action. Consider we have a group with two projects. On the group members page, we can now add a new user to the group. Now, because this user is a developer member of the group, they automatically get developer access to all projects within that group. If necessary, you can increase the access level of an individual user for a specific project by adding them again as a new member to the specific project with the new permission level. In GitLab Enterprise Edition, it's possible to manage GitLab group memberships using LDAP groups. See the GitLab Enterprise Edition documentation for more information. Thank you for watching this GitLab video. You can find more training videos on our YouTube channel and a lot of additional resources at about.gitlab.com slash resources.